Come be a part of Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics with your host, Dr. Ed Holliday. Hear the voices of liberty speaking all across America. Doc Holliday provides thought-provoking interviews and commentary about the issues and actions that are afflicting this country and what we need to do to get America back on track. Get fired up. Get inspired. Get on board with Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics right now. And here we go. And once again, that's the sound of rock cracking. You've got Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics right here on webtalkradio.net. I'm your host, Dr. Ed Holliday. And this week, yes, we are going to look back at January 6th, 2021. And there's a committee that in Congress looking into it. How well are they doing? Are they looking at everything? Well, we got some clips from uh, Kamala Harris and what she thought about January 6th, and her speech. And uh, clips from uh, Sean Hannity's show telling us some things that maybe you have not heard. But we are going to look into that for this week's show. But before we do that, the numbers came out uh, for the first week in January of uh, December for the job report. So we got to look at that. Let's let's look at this. And there's some things that the press is not telling you in the report. And you're going to hear it right here on Doc Holliday's Rock Split and Politics. Take a listen to this first. Well, that's a little dire straits from you to what's the matter, baby. Well, there's a lot that's a matter with this economy. And again, I think the administration was praising some numbers, but we got to look at what this is the first jobs report of 2022 and the stock market didn't like it made them sick and it's uh it, it's making economists sick when you look at what uh, uh what's going on there so what is going on well we have to look at uh, uh, the numbers um, the good part well unemployment's down why is unemploy- unemployment down because <laughs> We don't have as many workers. We don't have as many people looking for work. And we got over 10 million open jobs. And this is what's sickening in it. We found out over 4 million people quit their jobs in November. I think that's the highest number ever recorded, 4 million. Now, some of those are forced out by what? Vaccine mandates. It's... uh, it's hard to get health care workers. And many of them have been forced out of hospitals, out of their clinics, because they, you know, if you want to take a vaccine, take it. If you don't want to, you should not be forced to. But now the government is forcing people to take vaccines. Then the Supreme Court's here just last week, here on the case, maybe we'll hear this week or hear very shortly because it's very important. And, and we've talked about the, this here before on vaccine mandates. If there is a law, let Congress make it. Joe Biden, in a, a year in office now, almost a complete year. Now, if Congress wants to make a law, I don't think they should. But let Congress make a law. But the president of the United States is an executive branch. He obeys and enforces the laws. He does not make law. And we've talked about this on the show many times. And, and yet we, we see the executive branch overreaching. And when Trump was trying to do things, they called him authoritative, uh, a dictator, uh, called him all kind of names. He didn't do anything near as much. And with COVID, he started out saying the states, each state needs to fight this. And Biden mocked him. And now Biden has said he's going to get rid of this virus. He's going to have war on the virus. Well, guess what? The virus has won, Mr. President. You remember just last summer they were saying, get the vaccine, and he won't get the virus. But now people with that vaccine, Whoopi uh, Goldberg, uh, others, are, are 
prominent people out saying get the vaccine and yet they still get COVID. They said we did everything that we were told to do and we still got COVID. So the vaccine is not helping you from getting the uh, COVID evidently. Uh, it might not make the cases severe if you get it. But there's still no right, no uh, position that the president has to force people to uh, have the vaccine in order to work, in order to, to have a job. But let's get back to the numbers. I was telling you about those numbers that were awful as far as over 4 million people quitting their job. And they're going to talk about unemployment being down. But the, this is the scary thing. And we've talked about this over the years. And this is what you don't hear, but most important number. The most important number we need as a nation and what the future looks like is the labor force participation. It's near the lowest since 1977. And what they don't tell you is our population <laughs> was so much uh, lower then. And it is a percentage of the working people who are old enough to be in the workforce and but it's the lowest that it's been since 1977 we we are in bad trouble because where does the government get its money if they don't print it the only money the government has is from the working people who pay taxes if you're not working if you're not making money not making a product if you're not doing something that you can earn a living at, then you aren't paying taxes. And the fewer people working, the less taxes the government has to work with. Are all taxes bad? No, we have to run this country. But what, what should we be taxed at? And here it goes Joe Biden and the Democrats have done it time and time again. When you increase taxes, you get less production. People aren't going to work. If, if you have to work your tail off and you're keeping 80% and giving the government 20%, that's acceptable. But when you're working your tail off and, and you're having to give the government 50 and 60% of what you earn, why work so hard? It's not worth it. And over the years, again, people in the socialist movement and communist movement they don't understand this. All they look at is paper, and they believe everybody just go, has a good heart, and they're going to work their tail off no matter what. And it's all be equal. Equality. We should have equality in the law. But people, some people can work harder. Some people can work smarter. Some people can run a business. Some people want to go and work in a factory or, or work for themselves as an electrician, as a plumber. Many great jobs out there earning great money if people know how to handle money. And even the low uh, cost, uh, the low wage jobs, the working poor, uh, they, with the incentives that Bill Clinton started, but you get a lot of federal incentives just to work, even if it's a low paying job, even if it's a minimum wage job. But <laughs> this country needs people working. And and we don't have people working. And therefore, we aren't going to have the taxes to support all the government spending. And it, and as we flooded this government, the government flooding of money into our, into our society has got some people, evidently, they don't feel like they have to work. But you can't just keep pouring money in without causing what? Inflation. But that's not the worst part of it. As the inflation goes up, the people who are dependent on government money have to have a raise or they can't afford the higher milk prices, the higher beef prices, the higher gas prices. It, it's a serious cycle that many people who did not live through the 1970s don't understand. I was there in the 70s as a child and then uh, graduated in high school in 79 and and the inflation was horrible yeah <laughs> you you could go to the bank and get a cd at 17 and 18 percent interest per year that's how high the interest rates went to try to uh 
to to knock it out, to knock inflation out. And uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, he he got it under control under his administration. With well, how did he do it? Well, tax cuts and the Fed, uh, Mr. Volcker back then, the head of the uh, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, he raised rates uh, up to knock it out, and it caused a recession. So is it going to cause another recession? I don't know. You don't know. But I'm saying my my eyes are on the labor force participation, and, and it came in like at uh, about 62%. Uh, I'm looking here. I don't give you the wrong number, but it's uh, it's just it's scary because we have fewer people working and we got more mouths to feed as a nation and and with two million people coming across the border i mean they have to eat don't they uh i'm talking about the people are coming across the border illegally you have more and more people who have to eat but that uh the labor force participation participation rate uh was uh 61.9 percent in november and then they say it had uh, ticked uh, up maybe just a point, but we're, we're right there at 62%. And uh, where was it before? Well, we uh, under Trump, it moved up some. Uh, in around the year 2000 is when it peaked at about 67%, a little bit over. But we're down to, th- almost down to 60% in the 50s. And, and that, our country cannot survive in with any kind of um, uh, good living conditions if we don't have more people working and pers- participating in the workforce. For the simple reason is that's where the government gets its taxes from the working people. And and no matter what they say, oh, we're going to just tax the rich. Well, the rich will stop working or stop collecting something. You know, it's it, you got to, you got to have that labor force participation rate, and with this government and the Congress, Republicans and Democrats have got to do something to help get that participation rate up. And the, the Republicans have the best idea: when you cut taxes, people will work more because that's what capitalism is. <laughs> when you join into a group and everybody gets paid the same, no matter how hard you work, well. The incentive to work is not there. It's just not there. You remember the, <laughs> the pilgrims tried it. And, and that common storehouse where everybody would go out and work in the fields and put it in a common storehouse and everybody get what they needed, <laughs> it didn't work. It just did not work. And socialism will not work. And yet this country is going more and more to socialism. And uh, if you want to know how bad it is, look at Kamala Harris. Don't look at any any place uh, else to see how bad the left wants this nation to be socialist. That's why Kamala Harris is in the vice presidency. And hey, we, we got to get on to with the January 6th, what happened there. But let me just say this about Kamala Harris, our vice president. And I respect her as being the first woman vice president. I respect the office. But her socialism skills is what got her in the p- position. And there's some people saying, <laughs> this is crazy, but this is what the socialists do. Some people actually believe she's doing so bad on purpose. You know, Joe Biden gave her the uh, position to uh, take care of the border crisis. And it's just gotten worse and worse. The only thing that might solve it is a federal judge who says they have to go back to the Trump era policies. But Kamala Harris, our vice president, has not. It doesn't seem like she's lifted a finger to stop the chaos and the crisis that's on the border. But some people, again, you, you don't see this published, but underneath, some people are talking about. And so I'll go ahead and say it: Is she doing a horrible job on purpose to make her president, Mr. Biden, look bad? And as he looks worse and worse, like, I mean, what a horrible year he's had. Look what happened in Afghanistan under his leadership and under what, I mean, it was horrible what happened in Afghanistan. And the Democrats like to pride themselves on being for women's rights. Well, look how many women who have been butchered, killed, 
kept from working in jobs, keep kept from going to school in Afghanistan. How many millions of women have been abused because of the policies of President Biden? Uh, it's countless. It is countless. And so, going back to what Vice President Harris is doing, and all the jobs, she, her, 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 her uh, uh, numbers for a uh, uh, percentage of people who like her, her favorability is is worse than Joe Biden's, and he his is just horrible for any president. And yet, could it be that she's doing such a bad job to make President Biden look bad, so that he will finally resign, and then the all out and out socialist will get everything they want in Kamala Harris being president. Is she doing a bad job so that she can be president sooner? You know, that is so, <laughs> some people go, that is so stupid to even think that. And yet, is she doing it? It's like a socialist would. would. I mean, have you heard her laugh and cackle? I think she's trying to cackle herself into the presidency and and it's just she's doing such a horrible job. <laughs> I mean, it's horrible. You get a job to work on the border and solve the crisis. You know, you can go down there or you go make an appearance, and 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 that's it. And I mean, there's still a crisis. Everybody knows there's a crisis on the border, and we could go on and on about our vice president. But let me let her speak to you about January sixth, and this is this is how bad our pre vice president is this is her thinking her thinking does not connect dots it drops off into i, I don't know what what i don't know what's in her head or how she thinks she's obviously reading a speech that somebody wrote for her uh, i hope she wrote it because if she did it's the reason why people are not uh, being very favorable to our pr vice president I can't believe what she did. Listen to this. Certain dates echo throughout history, including dates that instantly remind all who have lived through them where they were and what they were doing when our democracy came under assault. Dates that occupy not only a place on our calendars, but a place in our collective memory. December 7th, 1941, September 11th, 2001, and January 6th, 2021. I cannot believe our Vice President of the United States would equate January 6th, 2021 with Pearl Harbor or 9-11. And Pearl Harbor, does she not know that over 2,000 servicemen died? And we know some are entombed even now, you know, at Pearl Harbor in the ship that went down? Does she not, has she not read the stories of the, of the burning oil and the waves and people jumping off the boats to try to survive and they jumped into the burning oil and, and were burnt going down into the waters? Does she not know the chaos and the men, the servicemen, who died for their country, over 2,000, over 2,000. And only, uh, uh, and she says that January 6th, equating like the Japanese who came over with a brutal, calculated attack to kill and maim our country by maiming the, our Navy. And she wants to equate what happened on January 6th, 2021 with over 2,000 deaths of our brave servicemen and, and women there in Pearl Harbor. And then January, September 11th, over 3,000 Americans died. Over 3,000 Americans died. And she wants to equate January 6th with that. I mean, and we're going to talk about that. We, why? Why? Why would the January 6th committee, Benny Thompson, Congressman Benny Thompson is the chairman, 
Homeland Security Chairman, running the committee. Why doesn't he look at the whole picture? Why does he? Why does he ask? Why did this happen? Well, you ask. You want to know why? I wonder. Listen to what Sean Hannity, how his show started out, and and what he can tell. Let's just play this clip and see what they missed out on. What Congressman Thompson and the committee has missed, just on purpose, evidently. We have fake hysteria, crocodile tears, analogies now to 9-11, Pearl Harbor, and even the Holocaust, complete with a special performance from the cast of Hamilton. It's a clown show on a spectacular level. And coming up, we're going to bring you much-needed truth into this conversation. We will point out all the rank hypocrisy, the double standards, the lying, the grandstanding, and who really is responsible for not protecting the Capitol that the mob will never talk about, that the commission will never investigate or committee will never investigate. Former chief of staff to the secretary of defense, Cash Patel, he will be here and he will explain how Donald Trump two days prior to January 6th last year, wanted to call in 20,000 National Guard troops before the January 6th date. Nancy Pelosi and the D.C. mayor, that's Bowser, refused the guard. In other words, this was all completely preventable, except Democrats rejected the protection. Can someone, someone please ask Congressman Benny Thompson from Mississippi, that's my home state, why? He, he hasn't asked Nancy Pelosi to testify to why she didn't bring the National Guard's uh, troops in beforehand when it was offered time and time again. Why won't he get the mayor of D.C. to tell why she refused to sign off before January 6th to bring in extra National Guard? Why? Why? I mean... You can't have an investigation without asking that question. If you never want it to happen again, ask that question. Look, uh, let me remind you, you listen to Doc Holliday's Rock Split in Politics. We're talking about January 6th, what happened a year ago, and we're getting a few details that you're not going to hear everywhere else. I mean, uh, uh, they, the, they have, the Democrats have so politicized January 6th into... They're molded, molding it into something that they can get political capital on and not doing a full investigation. And that's why they did not let Jim Jordan and other congressmen on the committee. They only selected someone who voted to impeach Trump. They purposely slanted the committee. And uh, let, let's, uh, let me play this clip from uh, Sean Hannity again about that. 174 violent riots from the summer of 2020 um, where is the committee investigating all of those riots with dozens of dead Americans, thousands of injured cops? Now, you remember that at the beginning, for example, the riots, the fake news referred to as fiery, but mostly peaceful. You know, the reporter would have a big fire behind them, but said it's mostly peaceful. All told, thousands of police were injured, some very severely in the fiery but peaceful protests, as they said. Dozens of Americans dead. There were over 600 arson attacks. 97 police vehicles were lit on the attack. 11 were transported to a local hospital. But according to Democrats, the media mob, the January 6th Commission committee, this never happened. Where is the committee investigating this? Take a look for yourself. Please, should that be done by a commission or the city council, not a mob in the middle of the night throwing it into the harbor? People will do what they do. Violence across the whole country. Do you disavow the violence from Antifa? That's happening in Portland right now? That's, that's, riots that, in... that's a myth that's being spread only in Washington, D.C. About Antifa in Portland? Yes. This is a mostly protest. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not, generally speaking, unruly, but fires have been started. There needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. And unfortunately, there's plenty to go around. Now, then Senator Kamala Harris, she even took it a step further. She promoted the bail fund for the violent rioters. And in June of 2020, in the middle of those riots, she told Stephen Colbert, they're not going to stop. They shouldn't stop. We're not going to stop. Take a listen. 
but I, I know that there are protests still happening in yes. major cities across the United States. I'm just not seeing the reporting on it that I that right. I had that's right. for the first few weeks. That's um, right. But they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. And that's they're not. This is a movement. I'm telling you, they're not going to stop. And and everyone beware because they're not going to stop. It is going to. They're not going to stop before election day in November, and they're not going to stop after election day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not going to let up and they should not. And now she is our vice president. That, what, what did she say about protesters? They're not going to stop. And it, it was a movement. Well, what, what does she think happened on Capitol Hill? I am not condoning the, the violence and the fighting of the officers on Capitol Hill. I'm in no way promoting that. Any violence against any police officer, uh, they should be fully prosecuted. But for her, as vice president now, to talk so highly of, of, of stopping protests, and when what she had said during the protest of 2020 that got very violent and burnt down properties and people died. More than people died at the Capitol. And the people down at the Capitol, there's one police officer, and finally, you know, they got the autopsy, and it was from natural causes. And yet, there's so many myths out there. And I celebrate all the hero officers that day. I do celebrate them, and they are heroes. And I hate what happened at the Capitol. And I want more than anything is a full report, a full report from someone in Congress, from some committee in Congress. They will go back and ask Nancy Pelosi. I mean, put the good, the bad, and the ugly out. But put it all out there. Put put it all out there. And there are people like uh, the gentleman named Ray Epps. Who is he? You know, there, there he is. We, we got video footage of him telling people to go in the Capitol. We need to go into the Capitol the night before and the day of telling people we got to get into the Capitol. Why isn't he arrested? Is he a federal agent? If he is, why is a federal agent telling people to commit crimes and, 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 and wanting people to commit crimes? So let, let's, I'm going to let Sean Hannity finish up this clip and uh, talking about why aren't some of these questions a answered. Beware. Take note. They're not going to stop. We're not going to stop. Then promoting a bail fund, people involved in the burning down of a precinct and the disaster that was Minnesota at the time. Well, now, where, when are we going to have the committee investigate Vice President Kamala Harris? While well, Kamala Harris reveled in the violence, President Trump, he was attempting all through the summer of 2020 to restore law and order all across the country. He was trying to use every tool at his disposal, including the National Guard. And after a long summer of large, violent demonstrations, uh, President Trump knew how important it was to always prepare for the worst ahead of any massive demonstration. You always have bad actors, unfortunately, two days before January 6, 2020. We can now report tonight completely, and we will have it backed up in a minute, that Donald Trump authorized up to 10 uh, or 20,000 National Guard soldiers to protect the Capitol. The Capitol Police chief also requested the National Guard not once, not twice, not three times, six separate times. Both Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of Washington, D.C., Bowser, they needed to sign off on the president's order and both rejected these requests again and again. By doing so, they left the Capitol totally vulnerable, and as we now know, it was breached within mere seconds. Cash Patel, who will join us in a moment, provided us a document showing Bowser's rejection. And when will Nancy Pelosi and Mayor Bowser be subpoenaed to testify before this holier-than-thou, sanctimonious January 6th committee that has the likes of Adam Schiff, the guy that lied for three-plus long years about uh, election integrity issues that never happened? He lied over and over again about Trump-Russia collusion. Now, likely they'll never do it. And ask yourself this question. If the true purpose of the committee is to understand what happened 
so that it can never happen again. How can you possibly ignore the issue of rejecting the National Guard that the president called up? The only reason I can think of is the com committee is playing partisan politics and it has a predetermined outcome. All they want to do is bludgeon and blame Trump again. Everybody on the committee voted to impeach Trump post presidential, uh, his post presidential service. The books are cooked. The books are cooked, and that's why we need a real committee. I, if the Republicans can take over in, in, in 2022, maybe we'll get a real report. I'm not saying everything's wrong that Congressman Benny Thompson's doing, but he's sure not looking at all the questions, and he should. For the sake of the future of our nation, he should look at all the questions, and the whole committee should. But they've made it a political ploy. They're using taxpayer money to, uh, for political purposes, and it's a shame, and it's a sham. It's a sham because they're not looking at all, they're not op looking under all the rocks. There's some they're selectively leaving out, and not even releasing all the videotape for everybody to look at it. Why? Why? I mean, we have a committee asking questions. We need to know as Americans what happened that day, and you're not asking all the questions. So that's uh, Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics, looking back about a year ago. And what is 2022 half ahead of us? It'll be a rock splitting politic year, okay? And you can listen to things you won't hear anywhere else right here on Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. Glad to have you. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends and neighbors <laughs> this get get geared up 2022. It'll be a year of rock splitting politics. See you next week. Thanks for joining us today and remember to listen again next week for another edition of Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. You can order Ed's new book, Bedrock Truths, by clicking on the book cover right in front of you on the screen or visit DocHolliday.org. Thanks for listening and we'll see you again next week.